three, two, one. Oh man, this is trippy. Sort of messed up. Is this too much? All right, so hello, welcome to Scuffed Content. This is a little more informal than I usually do it. Mentality of a game developer, principles of game development. Got my list here, I wrote them down. Um, list item number one. Show, don't tell. How many times have we played a game and it's just really boring because it's a bunch of exposition why are we not playing through this? Games with tutorials, with text that pops up and says, do this, it's like, okay, could we not let the player experience that? Like games are interactive, so it's always better to give the player an opportunity to experience something for themselves. Next one is every project will go through a timeline where we start off sort of at the beginning and at the beginning we're planning and then we progress down that timeline to the stage where we're done. Now, the thing is, everything flows on. So any effect that we make early in the planning stage, you want to have it so that the early stages of the timeline are cheaper and easier to modify. The earlier you can plan everything out, the better the project is going to turn out, especially for the show don't tell thing, right? So early on, it doesn't matter what your budget is, what heaps, massive budget, small budget, doesn't matter, costs nothing to plan. If something needs to change, we can say, okay, well, it needs to change, but we have an idea of the general shape of what this project is going to look like. So where can we dial it back and still keep the original intention in mind? And this leads into my next point, which is everything can be scaled. The intro video I did for one of my previous videos, which was super cringe, but a lot of fun to shoot. I originally had a different version of that, which relied on having another person to film. Didn't happen, but I was still able to shoot a version of it, which kept the original joke that have a, a plan A, B, C, D, as many as you need. Everything can be scaled but you want to upfront know what everything is going to be, know what the intention of the project is going to be, so you can see where and how you can make cuts. Game development is a logistics problem. It's not about being smart, although that helps. It's sort of a threshold you need to get past. So if you can basically do stuff, you can basically do game development. The hard part is working on it long-term, maintaining enthusiasm long term and 90% of it is project planning you've you've got you've got the same troops as every other army on the battlefield but if you can strategically deploy your troops manage your resources things are going to turn out a lot better it's a process it's not emotion based it's a process you're planning you're scheduling and then things will hopefully fall into line and if they don't fall into line, well, you've got a plan. You can work around it. And what I was saying before about like game development is not a question of how smart you are, leans into my next point, which is like having primary versus secondary skills. So I'm a programmer, I'm a developer. My primary skill is programming. And I think I'm pretty good at that, but that will not take me all the way. I can get better at programming, better at programming, but then I will be held back by other things with, can I manage a project? Can I manage a team? Can I program, but make things which are good and have some taste and see like how it's gonna fit into the bigger picture? Um, as another example, let's say you are an illustrator. Your primary skill will be drawing. You can grind that out. You can put thousands of hours into drawing, but it's not gonna carry you all the way. Your secondary skills would be knowing that the right things to draw to get eyeballs on your work, networking, working with other people, no matter what it is. There's the primary skill, which is like, what's my core craft? What do I want to get good at? But then there's another order of magnitude on top of that, which is how do I apply this to the world and make something that people like and build a career basically. And that's um, it's quite a puzzler. So the way I think about game development and, you know, running I have, I have a business now i registered it officially on paper it's a business it's not the ice age okay the ice age is over but 
I'm just sort of at the beginning of civilization where you've got these hunter gatherers and we're starting to realize that we can get benefits from teaming up together and making like proto societies. I see my responsibility as a business owner, as an employer, as being the person who constructs the campfire, pitches the tents and sort of constructs something that other people can huddle around. It's my job to keep the ship moving forward so that the people who I'm working with, who, by the way, I have a, an extremely talented team, I'm very happy to have them. And I just want them doing their core stuff right, and doing the best job that they can. And one of the prerequisites for that to happen is for me to be organizing businessy stuff. This point sounded a lot more profound when I wrote it down. The number one thing that I will always invest in is human talent, because I can't draw, I can't do these things. But together, we can complement each other and we can make stuff which is really cool. And day by day, all of us are just focusing on our individual tasks, but the whole project has a direction, hopefully. And then the last one, and you know what this last point is going to be, but 100% you have to support other game developers. I, if you really understood how big the talent pool is, these other people are not your competition. It's, and it's not even that. Game development is not a zero sum game, right? It's like it's morally right for us to make the best games that we can and to push each other and support each other. It's a really weird situation where right now, indie game developers are making stuff that's better than AAA. And the only way we can do that is by focusing on quality. And the only way we can do that is by having people around us who will give us honest feedback and whose games we can compare ourselves to, but not even in a healthy competition way, just not even in a competition way. It's If we took all of the game developers in the world, we could probably fill a country. So imagine a country with just game developers and then imagine that you somehow need to stand out amongst that population. It's about as difficult as being famous in your own country. So don't even, the only way to grow is to put that stuff aside. But anyway, so there you go. New style of video, I guess. Little, we'll see. Just my thoughts on moving forward currently. I'll be heading down to Melbourne next week. Check out PAX and Games Connect Asia Pacific. Happy to meet up with anyone. Super keen. And yeah, otherwise, how are you guys going? How's your day? Let me know. Have a great one. Bye.